Welcome to a tutorial on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the box macro within Harlow 3.3. So we've previously seen when we work with alignment and columns within a Harlow that we use the equal sign to define space. When we use multiple equal signs and then the greater than or less than sign to define alignment within Harlow, we point at where the next content will be, defining the alignment using the number of equal signs. This is also true of columns, that is the space margins around the column with the bar symbol to start the columns. So we're going to carry that idea of using equal signs to define space into using the box, macro, the box macro. So the difference between the box macro and the previous two things I just talked about, alignment and columns, is that the box macro works with a corresponding hook, and this allows us to find a subsection of a page that will be defined as a box. And this gives us some interesting visual layout opportunities. So let's go ahead and pull this up. So as defined right here, notice that we're using an X instead of the bar and instead of the greater than or equal than sign for alignment and columns, we're using the X. And so X marks the spot. In this case, the X is defining the horizontal position. So if we just have a single X right here, notice the quotation marks, then it will start in the default position. However, down here, if we have an equal sign, an X, and an equal sign, it will create three corresponding columns and place it in the middle. The same down here, this is now the middle fifth. There are two on one side, two on the other, and it's right in the middle. And down here is the right third. Now the other thing we have here with the box macro is we have a number. This is the width. And because it's a box, the width and the height are the same number. So we just define it one time. So we have a box. We have where we want it positioned horizontally using X right here in equal signs if we want them. And then the size, width, and height of the box. So let's go ahead and start the story from this passage. So build and play for me. And notice we have a very slight normal indent. This is the box and play. We have right here middle. We have the middle fifth, but notice something a little interesting here. I have content that extends beyond the width and height of the box. If this is ever the case, then a scroll bar right here will be automatically added for us. And down here, notice that positioned on the right, it's over here in the right third. Now let's go back and look at that. Notice this was one, this was one, and this was one, which is where we saw it shift into the scroll bar, but this is two. So because this is two and it's bigger than the content within it, the scroll bar did not appear. However, in the case that there was more content than the box could hold, a scroll bar did appear. So let's go ahead and move over to example two to see this. So this box right here will have lots and lots of content. Its inside hook is much bigger than its size, which is set to one. So let's go ahead and move the start of the story. So up here, move start story to example two, build and play. So in this case, notice right here, we've got more content that can be contained. So we've got a scroll. And then notice if I come over here though and change this from one size to say three and we play it again, notice it looks fine because there's more space for the box than there is content. And so the usefulness of the box macro, similar to alignment and columns, as I mentioned at the start of this video, is that it allows us to visually arrange things. However, boxes are different than alignment and columns in a very noticeable way. That is, it defines a subsection. So everything within this hooks then becomes a subsection with its own height and width. So if the content within it is greater than the width or the height that is, defined within it, then we will get a scroll bar. This allows us to create little subsections within a page that if we want to add much more content, but we don't necessarily want to extend the corresponding height of a passage, then we can put the content in a subsection in what we call a box using the box macro and use a scroll bar to scroll through it. That is allowing us to add much more content to a page without correspondingly extending the height of the passage or height of the page itself within a web browser. So not as useful for many opportunities, but in special use cases, incredibly useful defining boxes that we can put content into using a corresponding hook, just like this example right here, defining with an X where it is horizontally and with a number, the width and height, and then allowing us to change that as needed and center things as needed, following a pattern we've already seen with alignment, with columns, using the equal sign to divide up a certain thing within a, within a passage, in this case, the box horizontally divided up with a width and a height 
for the corresponding macro to create a box for whatever we need within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.